Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm in the glorious Peak District and the plan is to photograph dippers. I'm in my absolute favourite dipper location today, doing a bit of a recce because I'm running my second lot of dipper workshops of the year next week and I've not been here in a few weeks so I thought I'd come here and check out what's going on with the dippers. When I was running the workshops that was end of March, start of April and there were three nest building pairs of dippers so fingers crossed we've either got parents that are busy feeding going back to the nest with food or perhaps we might even have some juveniles that are at the nest I really don't know and I cannot wait to find out how everything has progressed I'll take you to the first nest location Absolutely amazing. The first nest site I've come to, I've seen three juveniles all flapping around, getting fed by their parents. Oh, I saw the parents about six weeks ago when they were nest building, so to come back and see that the nest has succeeded, they've got three chicks, they're doing their parental duties, Amazing. I mean an absolute flurry of activity. Love it. Love it. I managed to get a photo of all three of the juveniles on a rock together, so that was amazing. Result. One nest site checked. One successful nest site. Dippers and grey wagtails doesn't really get much better than this. What a lovely way to spend a day. Well, another nest site checked and another successful nest. Uh, it's hard not to be close to this nest to take photographs, so I don't want to go in there and disturb them at all. But I've just seen one of the adults popping into the nest with some food. So there's definitely chicks in there. So that's very good news. Well, I've just been to check the third and final nest site and I was fearing the worst because they weren't coming in and out of the nest. In fact, I couldn't see any for any dippers for about half an hour. But then I suddenly spotted about two meters down from where the nest was 
at the start of April, a little dipper popped into the nest. In fact, I got a photo with both male and female. And then the female went in with food. And then the male went in with food. So they're definitely feeding chicks. It is so, I mean, I keep saying it. I keep saying it, I'm repeating myself, but it is beautiful to see. I think because I spent so much time with these dippers, you end up getting pretty invested. So it is lovely to see them doing well. But about photography conditions, this nest site is under trees. And whilst you think that might not be great for photography, when there's bright sunlight like this, it means you can play with quite high contrast shots. Obviously the dipper is pretty high contrast already with the dark brown and then the bright white on the front. But if you can expose for the whites and essentially push everything else into shadow, to be honest, I think they're my favorite type of shots to take at the moment. Hopefully I'll be able to show you some that try and show you what I mean. I guess what I'm trying to say is there isn't really any bad light. You've just got to utilize the light that you've got to try and get different shots. I remember when I first started out, the advice was never to go out in direct sunlight, but if you can find yourself a wooded area or a shaded area, you can either get nice shots when everything's in shadow. Yes, it might be a bit darker, but with the bright light around, you'll get a good enough shutter speed for everything. Or, like I just said, play with heavy contrasts. I think it's important to go out and try as many different styles and types of photography as possible. And if you go in with the thought that there is no bad light, you can essentially take photos all day. You've just got to learn to work with the conditions that have been presented to you. It's all about environment and changing up what kind of shot maybe you're expected to take and find a shot that you can take and you're sure to come back with something that you're happy with. Or at least you'll have learnt a little something about what shots can and can't be taken under certain lighting conditions. I thought I was going to be ending this video with more dipper footage. I was ready to sit down for an extra couple of hours in a good dipper spot and then the river just exploded with life. There were flying insects everywhere and then a pair of mandarin ducks were unaware of me being there and I've just been photographing them for the last hour and a half. I went through a whole 128 gigabyte SD card there. I did get some footage, but I was trying to nail a photo of the male mandarin duck grabbing an insect out of the air. Who knows if I did? I certainly took enough photos. So let's see. I'll show you everything I've got right now.
What an amazing experience. I've been wanting to photograph mandarin ducks for an awfully long time. They're normally very flighty, but uh, looks like my field craft actually paid off. Oh, lovely. Right, I'm gonna leave it there. If you're interested in attending any workshops or you wanna keep up to date with any, any workshops that I've got coming up, then I've linked my website and my mailing list in the description. But for this video, that's that. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.